So I recently got a couple of Raspberry Pis and one of the projects that I wanted to do with it was to create a Node.js web server. And I actually did it, it's right over there if you can see it. But I wanted to document the process and so this video is that. So let's go ahead, cue the intro and get started. So the kit that I purchased from Amazon came with a power cable with a USB-C connector. A USB-C power switch that allows me to power the Pi on and off without having to unplug it. A neat little cooling fan. A 32 gigabyte micro SD card for storage. A cool lightweight case with decent ventilation and the Raspberry Pi symbol on it. A USB micro SD card converter that will allow me to easily connect it to my PC along with the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B itself. We have the USB-C power, two micro HDMI ports, 3.5 millimeter audio socket, two USB 2.0 slots, two USB 3.0 slots, and an ethernet port. To begin, I will go ahead and see how the Pi fits into the case. I like how sleek it looks, however the fingerprint smudges are very noticeable. There's ventilation at the top where the fan is going to be clipped in. On the bottom side of it, there are notches for the fan to easily fit into. The fan fits perfectly inside. I need to figure out which pins to connect the fan wires to. This guide shows me that I should connect the red to pin 2 and the black to pin 6. The back of the board has a single square solder, which likely implies that it is the pin number one on the guide. So pins two and six will be the opposite side from that one. So since the top left one is number one, I'll be plugging in the red into the top right and the black two pins below that one. So with everything reassembled, I will need to plug in the power supply and see if the fan powers on. In my case, the fan powers on as I expected. Next, I will want to install the operating system onto the micro SD card using the USB converter. On my PC, I'll go ahead and go to the official Raspberry Pi website and download Noobs, which is a software manager for the Pi. This will allow me to install the Raspberry Pi operating system very easily. Once that's finished, I want to go ahead and make sure that the download is intact, so I'm going to compare the hashes. This is a security measure to ensure that your download was not intercepted. This is overall a good habit to get into. I'm using an online JavaScript playground to write a simple comparison that will print true if the two strings match. The first string is the SHA from the download, and the second string is the SHA provided by the Raspberry Pi website. When I compare the two here in this console.log, it logs true, so I'm good to go. After that, I go ahead and extract the zip into its own folder. These are the files that I'll be putting onto the SD card. But first, I'm gonna download the recommended formatting tool. The official Noobs download page recommends this, so that's what I've decided to go ahead and go with. The installation process is simple and quick, and when it's done, I simply choose the SD card's drive letter, rename my drive to Pi, select Quick Format, and then click the Format button. Once that's done, I want to go ahead and drag the files from Noobs folder into my freshly formatted SD cards folder. The operating system is officially ready for installation, so it's time to go ahead and move back upstairs. I have to be honest, removing the SD card from the converter is extremely satisfying. So the Pi comes with two micro HDMI ports, but I am going to only be using the first one here, which is labeled zero. I'm plugging it into my TV because it's the easiest display for me to access at the moment. I had to wiggle the micro HDMI around a bit to get it to work, but it finally came up on the display. I immediately noticed how sensitive the mouse was. But anyway, the first thing to do is connect the Wi-Fi network, which is luckily a very simple process. I selected the 32-bit Raspberry Pi operating system full option, and this process took about 15 minutes, but once it was complete, I was greeted with a really nice wallpaper. It's time to set up SSH so I no longer need a monitor, keyboard, or mouse. I want to simply be able to remote into it from any other computer from the comfort of my desk or wherever I'm at. I also went ahead and adjusted the boot option to boot directly to the console and automatically log in whenever I power on the Pi. This way, it will be as simple as plug and play. Time to get rid of all of the unnecessary accessories and head back to the layer where I will begin setting up the node environment. To SSH into the Pi, it's as easy as typing in SSH Pi at and then the IP address of the Pi. 
Once you're in, it's just like navigating a normal Linux machine via Bash. What's neat is this operating system comes pre-installed with Node.js. Unfortunately, it's not the version I want, so I will need to use Node Version Manager, which appears to not be installed currently. This is a simple fix, I'll just go ahead and install it myself. I personally want to use version 12 of Node, and NVM makes it really easy to manage Node versions, hence the name Node Version Manager. Also, I use VS Code and use this remote SSH plugin to be able to code remotely via SSH. Once it's configured, I can easily traverse the file system and edit files all from within VS Code. So it's time to install Express.js, the infamous Node framework that makes it super easy to do stuff like what I'm about to do right now. And bam, it's working as expected. While I'm here, I wanted to also use this Pi as a file server. This is especially helpful for me literally right now because I can transfer the videos I'm recording with my phone to my computer. So I'm installing Droppy to do this for me. I ran into this permission denied error, but with a little bit of Linux hackage, I changed the folder's permissions and had no problems getting it to work after that. When I visit the URL in my browser, I'm presented with this login page and can quickly create an account and begin uploading files. Check this out, I'm literally uploading the video you are watching right now via the Raspberry Pi. The interface is pretty simple and it will make it very easy for me to transfer these videos to my PC for editing in Premiere. And now we are on the PC, let's check out the video I just uploaded. Pretty neat. Okay, now for the final piece, I'm going to use some 3M adhesive strips. These are super convenient. I'll drop a link below if you want to do something similar. The plan is to use these adhesives to stick my server to my wall inside of my studio. This is something I've always wanted to do for some odd reason. But uh, it's a little too big. Nothing some scissors can't fix. Voila, can't see a thing. Just have to stick it to the wall here and then plug in the power cable and I'm good to go. Here's a fully working file server and web server for only a hundred bucks. Not a bad deal at all, honestly. All right guys, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.